Bruce Springsteen gets laryngitis will not be seen at this time in order that we may bring you the following off-key program. It's 1992, and you're watching your favorite network, Nickelodeon. It's awesome. Double Dare is on, and you can't wait to see the new episodes when suddenly you see something new, cool, and different. There are kids wearing something that looks like plastic buckets on their feet, but are they bouncing? They're just hopping all over the place. What the heck is going on? And with that, what's up everybody and welcome back to Macabgorium Labs presents School of Boredom Quickies, Nickelodeon Edition. My name is Bats and I'll be your guide today as we discuss Nickelodeon moon shoes. Bounce to the stars. While the earliest documentation of moon shoes was in 1969, in this video we're going to be focusing on the Nickelodeon version which was much, much safer for kids. It is important to mention that the original moon shoes were made out of metal and coil springs that would attach to the person's shoe. Now we fast forward to 1992 when Nickelodeon began producing a child friendly version. They debuted this safer version on Double Dare and kids instantly went crazy for them. After all, what kid didn't want to have a mini trampoline attached to their feet for cool anti-gravity moon bouncing? However, what most kids didn't know is that these also help develop balance and coordination. So the Nickelodeon moon shoes got rid of all the unsafe metal and designed their shoes with closed sides from high density plastic with adjustable velcro closures and bungee style springs for a good bounce. They also had two self-centering shoe platforms and a pack of thick rubber bands and even anti-skid soles for extra safety. The moon shoes were made for children 7 years or older with a weight limit of around 130 pounds. When you received your moon shoes kit it came with everything you needed to bounce. It came with two moon shoe bases, two purple moon shoe straps, 36 rubber bands, and the instructions. After your parents assembled them, you would attach them to your shoes and start the fun. Parents, however, did not have the fun, as the moon shoes could take a while to put together. It was important for parents to attach the correct number of bands to the shoes. The amount of bands you would use depends on the child's weight. This helped give extra safety while they flew to the moon. Kids have unlimited imagination, and many of them created games with the moon shoes such as chasing each other, making obstacle course races, and timed races, just to name a few. Unfortunately, we never got to try moon shoes as a kid, but if you did, let us know how your experience was down in the comment section below. Of course, there were some downsides, as kids did tend to get injured. But most injuries were from incorrectly using the moon shoes and bouncing on unsafe surfaces. Because whoever thought a kid would misuse a toy like that. However, if you assembled them correctly and used them on the correct surfaces, again, what kid is gonna do that? And played safely, there <clears throat> and played with them safely, they were fun. We just wish they had adult sizes. Nickelodeon moon shoes are still available today at some stores and online so kids of today can have as much fun as us 1990s kids. And with that, we've come to the end of another School of Boredom Nickelodeon Edition Quickie. I've been your guide Bats and this has been Moon Shoes. Bounce to the stars. Be sure to check back next time, you never know what we have in store. And as usual, think for yourselves, be excellent to each other, and as usual, Keep it creepy. I'm out of here. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this one and would like to see more of our weird, creepy, odd, eccentric, or strange content as soon as it comes out, please feel free to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more. We'll see you later. Keep it creepy.